Keller was driving through the desert. This is 21 years ago in a week. And he saw an A-frame set up in the desert. Now, A-frames are set up like this for snow. Mm -hmm. That's the only reason an A-frame exists. Yeah. In the middle, the Mojave, there was an A-frame. And Teller said, you got to buy that. So it was a little tiny house, a couple thousand square feet, two floors, an A-frame. And originally, we called it the fucking A. I moved in with Colin Summers, who's an architect from out of Cornell. And we started thinking about how I would want to live in this place. When I was working on it, trying to decide what it was, I, uh, I visited USAMRID, which is the U.S. Army Disease Control Center. It's like Atlanta Center for Disease Control, except for weaponized biological agents. And there was a room at level four, incurable, airborne, all the bad stuff, hot zone stuff, that if you're contaminated, you went into this room, all the air is completely filtered and boiled and no food can go in and double air locks. And I said, boy, you know, a place that nothing can get into and nothing goes out. Such a nice retreat. I want this to feel like the slammer. So I bought all the land around it. When I bought it, it was two and a half acres. I changed to 10 acres and built this beautiful, heaven, wonderful retreat. And we started adding on. We added on much more than was the original house. It turned into a Winchester mystery house thing where I just kept building and building and building. When I finally had children, we added on a whole wing just for the children. It has kind of a New England vibe in the backyard. And I would live here the rest of my life if I didn't have children. Children don't want to be raised in a retreat. So in order to buy the new house, which was expensive, I have to sell the slammer. And it turns out the slammer is so eccentric that uh, you can't really sell the slammer. That's the downside. On the upside, the land, the 10 acres for developers, you know, box builders, is uh, worth a lot. So I had decided that I would sell the 10 acres and bulldoze it. I mean, I wouldn't bulldoze it. I would sell the 10 acres knowing it would be destroyed. I'd have some sort of breakout party and a uh, huge amount of sadness to that, you know. Um, we had full out rock bands with full outdoor festival playing and got one complaint from the police. Extreme Elvis was here, you know, the big fat Elvis that pees on people. Extreme Elvis was on and they ran into me and said, the police are here, Pat. It was great because I was wearing a t-shirt that said, Jesus hates me. So I turned my shirt inside out so it wouldn't have the Jesus hates me. You know, we all know the oppression of atheism. I ran out and he came in and said, you know, he complained. It's not that loud. I'm not telling you to turn it down. I'm not telling you anything. Just keep going just the way you are. It's all fine. And oh, by the way, your, uh, your Jesus hates me shirt is inside out. <laughs> Up here is the atheist Buddha of Vegas, which was designed especially for this rotunda built it out of clay, they made out of fiberglass, it has bottles that I juggled underneath it. That was made by Davy, James Randi's husband. The slammer clock was made for here. There's outlines of Teller on the floor. It's also where Lou Reed played. Lou Reed came here and played Slash played. Hitchens has already stayed here. Yeah. Dawkins has already stayed here. Um, I would love that to continue. Turtles live here. I have 12 red-eared sliders. And I was all ready to move to the new house or to give away to good homes in a goldfish cracker shaped pond with some koi fish. If this stays as atheist heaven, those red-eared sliders will, will get some love. They don't seem to care as much about the love as they do about the turtle chow, but I'm sure the love is in there somewhere. One of them really likes One me. of them really likes, well you, likes you. It likes me. Yeah. The courtyard and the backyard are gorgeous. There's a big room that was the children's like Playroom, living room. There's a beautiful lecture room that you could put about 100 people in. There's a steam room, a gym. A lot of bedrooms, a lot of comfort. Any sort of gathering that happens here, you're not going to have anybody complaining. There'll be plenty of parking. There's a wonderful uh, room in there that's all set up for a band. It's where my band practice. The question that I want to answer before I'm asked is why uh, won't you just give this to the atheist community? It's a wonderful choice. But uh, I have financed two movies, both of them with help. I did Tim Zermier, which was a successful documentary, 
and everybody knows how much money successful documentaries make. It's always negative. And Director's Cut, which is crowdfunded, and I raised a lot of money from that, raised a lot of money. And one of the things you do in crowdfunding is you lie, and you don't say you're putting your own money in. And the house that my wife and children wanted is expensive. So I have floated the money that I will get from this house to buy the other house. And I have, you know, it's Vegas. I have uh, Shylocks, loan sharks. No, I have, <laughs> I have a bank, which is the same thing, um, who, are, uh, who gave me the money to be able to buy this place. So there's this grace time of two or three months when I own the Slammer and I own my new house, the Hawk. And uh, if they can pull this off, which I think is iffy, it's a lot of money. This land is worth a lot now. And if I'm gonna sell it to atheists, I'll sell it cheaper than I would to developers. Uh, I love doing Penn Sunday School here. I love playing with my band. I have a whole back line, you know, amplifiers, guitars, drums, keyboards, that I was trying to find a place in my new house for. I'll just keep them here, give them to people, you know? My whole projector setup, all the microphones, all that rig, I can just give as part of my uh, donation. And as part of that, I'll come over and play with my band. I would love nothing more than to do the Penn Sunday School every noon on Sunday, but have it always piped out to another room and have anybody with like, you know, their atheist membership card, whatever, it, whatever you need to do to be a congregation member, anybody could come by any Sunday and hang out. I love the idea of there being a, a service and a party in Sunday School here every Sunday. I love the idea of visiting dignitaries, you know. Um, I would much rather that the slammer that I love end up in the hands of atheists and free thinkers than it just being, uh, you know, a developer that just bulldozes it down and builds uh, houses that are all the same. It was really meant to be a retreat. 